so welcome everybody. Um, this talk is down for um, Open Daylight Yang model overview. So what we wanted to do was kind of divide it into three sections, taking one each. I was pretty much just going to give a very quick overview of Yang. Getting away from that. I was going to give a very quick overview of Yang. Um, just a sort of straw poll. I mean, has everybody here seen a Yang model? Read into them? Anyone who's got any? There's a few of you hands up. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll probably just give a quick intro to it and why it's why it's so powerful. Um, then URI is going to show the Yang UI tool, uh, which is a great way to explore the models and figure out what they do. Uh, Bimmel um, is then going to show something that he wrote at the ITF hackathon for exploring Yang models. So the first question is, you know, why why do we care? You know, what, what's the point of of Yang? Um, and a lot of this came from an ITF effort back. Uh, in 2002, where a bunch of network operators were gathered together to say, well, what are the challenges you have with network operations, and you know, what are the things we ought to change? And so the, the consensus was that SNMP had failed. So you know, as a monitoring protocol, fine. Even that, of course, has challenges in terms of the polling load you tend to put on your devices. Um, but in terms of configuration, clearly, it hadn't worked out. Um, the vast majority of us in operators, my, my background's very much in operators um, I've been at Cisco, what, four or five years, and before that was at British Telecom and a few other operators before that. And, you know, we'd always end up CLI scripting everything, so you'd write expect scripts to manage your network. And so we needed something better. Um, and in the end, we went for a model-driven approach. So when NetConf was originally, originally came out, that was before we had Yang. Then in RFC 6020, Yang was defined. And the approach with Yang is to say, okay, let's have a data modeling language that's pretty much specific to networks um, and that addresses the problem of how do we model you know, routers, their interfaces, their configuration. But of course, it's, gen it's general enough that we can use it for more than that. Um, the key thing is, you know, ultimately, you have something like Open Daylight as your management application, and it will have all the Yang models that it needs to interact with the devices. The devices also have the models on them, so then you know, you know you're synchronized. The, the interesting thing with Open Daylight that we'll come on to is we took Yang way beyond that, so not just in the context of NetConf, but we use Yang as the IDL within Open Daylight. So pretty much everything in Open Daylight is Yang modeled. Um, and I think we're up to, we mentioned yesterday we had a talk in the, the main theater. Uh, I think with Open Daylight, we're up to 500 or so Yang models. So pretty much every part of it is described in models. So really, it's, you know, the key thing with a data model is to have something that's a consistent way of describing exactly what it is you're doing on the box. Um, instead of having CLI, where it's down to how do we describe this in text, it's have it described in a way that you, know, you can see precisely what it is you're doing. You've defined your data types. you defined your structure. And so you know exactly what operations it is you're performing. But as to the operations, clearly, you, know, you need a protocol to address that. So NetConf was what we originally defined for Yang. Um, we'll come on to RESTConf, which we use to access it over, over the web. Uh, and as I mentioned, within Open Daylight, we use it all the way through. So we create Java APIs that map directly onto Yang models. Now, Yang, you know, it's data model language. We have to distinguish between data models and information models. So you can use languages like Yang as information models. The difference is an information model is really aimed at us as humans to understand what is it we're modeling and what's the basic structure. With a data model, you really want to get down to that point where you can define right down to the data types, the names of the fields, that sort of thing. So you, you then have a consistent model between the device and the management station, which, as I say, in this case, is open daylight. Protocol-wise, yeah, you, you need to focus in NetConf on, on not just the, um, the base RPC mechanism, but what are the operations you're doing over it. So we think in terms of getting the config, editing the config, issuing RPCs, getting notifications, et cetera. Animations on this. So ultimately, what is Yang? Yeah, it's just a way of defining our management information for the router, or in the in case of open daylight, for the controller itself. So that's where we've, as I've said, we've seen that it started out as NetConf, but we've gone, what, you know, we've gone quite a ways beyond that. And that's turned out to be really powerful. So Yang itself. Um, as originally defined, the concept, the concept was that everything would map into XML. 
And the reason for mapping into XML is because XML is what Netcom carries around. Um, as a part of that, what we also do is we use some of the XML features themselves to enable things. So you know, XPAR filtering. And you can have, like a, for example, if you have a, a reference in your Yang model to another field, how you reference it is effectively defined in XML. So it all aligns very nicely with Netconf. But, but then what we realize is we could go beyond XML, because the Yang model itself is, in fact, it's very familiar to any of us who are C programmers or Java programmers. You see lots of curly braces and lots of semicolons. And yeah, we can then take that and map it into other encodings. So XML. Uh, Yin is also XML. So that this is one of the things that confused me when I first came across Netconf Yang, was I heard about Yang and the Yin. OK, that's a corny ITF joke. Yin is XML. Yang is the thing that looks more like a C program. Netconf Yang on the wire is XML. But what you have on the wire is not Yin. Yin is still representing the data model. It's not representing the instance data that you're carrying. And so um, you're right, you used Yin, didn't you, for the Yang UI tool. So the thing about, yeah, the thing about that is if you're, um, in terms of, of writing code, being able to represent the models in XML is then very powerful because you have code that can do that. Um, but as I say, we've also, we've also defined how to encode it in JSON. Uh, we carry it around in Java objects. And also, you know, pretty much anything you wanted to encode it in, you could. So there's been discussion of different binary encodings, um, particularly in terms of when we want to increase performance. The, the challenge that you have with um, XML or JSON is they're, they're fairly verbose, and it's text. It's human readable, which is great to have human readable stuff on the wire. But for performance, that might not be the way to go. So how does it compare to SNMP? Well, it's a layered model just like SNMP, and you can pretty much map a different layer of, of the whole NetConf Yang stack against SNMP. And I guess the key thing is at the top level, you know, Yang is the modeling language. And that is a parallel with SMI in the um, SNMP world. And in fact, we have, there is an RFC on how to map directly from SMI to Yang. So we've implemented that in XR, for example, where we're taking um, SNMP traps and we're mapping them into NetConf notifications. How do we map it? Well, we just follow that RFC. So then we can automate the generation of the mappings rather than having to hand code them on a per mid basis. So say so one, you know, one of the other things, um, although in the end for performance, we may want to change it, for, for basic operations, you know, the human readability is great. And I think that's one of the things um, you know, that we've generally seen uh, in protocols over the last few years is that move probably away from binary encodings for a lot of control plane things towards human readable encodings. Just it's, it's so much easier as, a, as an operator. You can just look at the data and see what it's doing. Um, you know, any of you who've, who've ever tried to decode ASN1, it's not, it's not easy. And even BGP, I mean, you sit there looking at these TLV encodings, it's pretty hard going. Once you can express things in something like a Yang model that can then be rendered into JSON or XML, your life's a whole lot easier. So in terms of NetConf, it's the back-to-front thing again, where the you know, open daylight is your client, and the device you're talking to with NetConf is your server. So you also have to remember things aren't always the, the way around that you'd expect. But the Yang models themselves are pretty much, um, you know, it's very clearly structured. There's actually an order. I should have probably put that slide in, explaining the, you know, the different types of things and what order you'd put them in. Um, one thing you start to have to learn is how to read the Yang models. And that's where, again, having a tool like URIs is going to help. That you can drill into a model. I mean, I certainly, when I started with Yang, obviously URI hadn't written the code yet. Um, and it, it's quite painful without tools like that to get your head around how models are structured. If you, particularly, I guess, if you've got a model and you've got some instance data that you want to express, how's that actually going to turn out on the wire? And figuring that out can be quite difficult. And with a tool, it's much easier, because you can see your model. You can type the data in for the different fields. And then the tools can show you, well, this is what's going to go on the wire. Um, one pattern we see an awful lot in Yang models is this concept of having a container where the name is plural, and then a list under it where the name is singular. And that gives you the advantage that you can, because a list entry you always get by key. So the question then is, what if I want to get all of the interfaces? Well, I just get the whole container. But otherwise, I can get an individual one by giving the, uh, the list name and then the key. 
So RESTConf, as, as I mentioned, we discovered that in fact Yang didn't need to be tied to NetConf. So RESTConf is really how we take Yang model data and carry it over HTTP. And that's the main way that you'll tend to interact with Open Daylight. Um, we can encode it as XML or JSON. And there's a fixed mapping really from HTTP operations into NetConf operations. So for example, if you do an HTTP GET, which of course is all you can do with a web browser, then that GET effectively, if it's config data, it maps to a GET config. If it's state data, it maps to a GET. But um, given a tool like REST Client or Postman, and I would certainly recommend that you get familiar with Postman, and that perhaps when you're working with a tool like URI's Yang UI, that you then, having figured stuff out, switch over to Postman and try it out directly from Postman. And with that, you can then do the puts and posts and deletes and those operations. So what we tend to see, get through that. The, um, the question is, OK, you've got these models, and how do you render those into H HTTP URLs? And so there's multiple versions of the REST comp spec. And in fact, in Open Daylight, we're still a few versions behind. Um, I suspect once it gets to RFC within the IETF, we'll update and follow the RFC. But the structure you see is that you have your config tree. So that's the configuration of your device. Or if the model lives on open daylight, it's configuring open daylight itself. The operational tree is state data. Um, you have the modules themselves. And then operations, that's really where you start doing um, like RPCs against the models. Streams, I guess, that's, that's when we get on to the NetConf notifications, which, um, as I said, we've only just put support for that into XR. In open daylight, um, up to the Helium release, access to notifications was constrained to Java applications that lived inside the controller. So the, the RESTConf implementation didn't support notifications. That's changed in Lithium. So we can now get notifications out of open daylight. I think in Lithium, we've done it with WebSockets. Uh, the, the direction for RESTConf, in fact, is to go with SSE, which is an alternative way of doing unsolicited notifications over HTTP. So if you look at the NetConf approach to Yang, what we've added with RESTConf is an alternative encoding at the bottom layers of the stack, but also the ability to carry the data as JSON. What we're seeing also in the ITF is the ITRS effort, which is standardizing access to sort of ephemeral data on routers. So routing tables and ACLs, where you might want to just hold them in memory rather than stuff that's stored as config. Um, we haven't yet decided on the encoding for that. It will probably be something binary rather than being JSON or XML. The other thing is we'll probably want to make it more asynchronous. One of the challenges becomes if um, you know, the NetConf protocol or RESTConf, it's all very synchronous. You're issuing a command and getting a response. For something where you're trying to insert or delete routes very fast or where you're adding ACL entries, you're probably going to want an asynchronous protocol to do that. But as I mentioned, within Open Daylight, and that's key, is that we describe all of our interfaces using Yang. So this is with the MD cell. The original AD cell was effectively hard-coded, but with MD cell, everything's Yang models. And as of Lithium, the AD cells deprecated. Uh, in Beryllium, the next release of Open Daylight after that, there will be no AD cell. So everything will be Yang models. So how does that work, the IDL piece? Well, fundamentally, in your controller, you, you know all the Yang models. So the controller itself, as I mentioned earlier, has 500 or so Yang models. Plus, there are any Yang models that you learn from NetConf devices you're connected to. So with, a, with every southbound protocol that isn't NetConf, what happens is your southbound plugin comes with the Yang models to manipulate that plugin. Whether that's BGPLS, whether it's OpenFlow, whether it's PSET, there is a Yang model for that plugin. And that Yang model has config information, but may also have operations. So for example, for PSET, you have an, an add LSP um, RPC, an update LSP RPC, and a, a delete, or is it removed? It's one or the other, delete LSP RPC. So we take those models and we feed them in through the tooling inside the MD cell part of Open Daylight. And that ends up generating two different APIs for us. One is the binding aware API. So that's within Open Daylight itself if you're writing Java code. The binding aware, it's aware of, you know, you're aware of the classes that you're binding to. And those classes are generated from the Yang models. 
So every type definition that you have in your Yang module, that will get mapped into a Java class. Lists become Java classes, containers, etc. So as a programmer, that makes it kind of easy to manipulate the data. But the thing you'll probably see more of, certainly I think you know, the vast majority of us aren't writing Java code inside Open Daylight. We're interacting with it. And so what we'll tend to see is the RESTConf APIs, the binding independent ones, where we're just mapping those models into that URL structure and then providing you access both over XML and JSON. I mentioned the, you know, the models that come with Open Daylight versus the models that we can learn on the fly. So this is how we learn them on the fly. And in fact, the first case is kind of strange one where Open Daylight connects to itself to do configuration. So through RESTConf, you can access the controller. That can be mapped automatically through those API bindings into the NetConf southbound. And then for configuration, we actually have a NetConf connection back into the controller to configure it. And so there are Yang models there. And the main thing you see is this, um, this config Yang model that has a container in it called modules. And then everything you configure will be a module within that. So for example, if you want to add a BGP neighbor, if you want to add a NetConf device, you'll be posting to RESTConf and posting a new module. One of the benefits there is you can do that on the fly. So originally in Helium, all we had, sorry, in Hydrogen, all we had was config files. And the problem with the config files is they were only loaded at startup. So you had to restart the controller to reload the configs, whereas now, because you can post to config modules, you can put stuff in on the fly. There are still config files there, but I wouldn't use them. Um, the pattern you see when you're mounting something southbound of you is that you have this Yang X mount that appears in the URL. So that's saying now the model I'm accessing isn't a model that's local to me. It's a model that exists on a device southbound of me. And that's something we're pushing through the IETF as a standard, this concept of a remote mount, where you're not accessing your local data store, you're accessing a remote one. So with, with for example, XR routers that we're discovering, so the first thing you would do is post to config modules with the IP address, the username, the password, etc., of the router. Having done that, the controller will then go off, contact the router, it will then pull in the schemas from the router. So when you connect to NetConf, you'll get a list of all the Yang modules that device supports. Open Daylight will pull all of those in so it knows what that router supports. It will then look at its existing cache of modules and will say, do I already know everything this router knows? And anything I don't already know, I'll pull into my model cache. And that is the same model cache we saw a couple of slides ago that was being used to generate the APIs. Now, of course, if we access another XR router, for example, and it's on the same release, you would expect exactly the same set of models. So you wouldn't add anything new to the cache. If you had a different release, you might find some of the models had changed. And what we do there is we version the models by the revision date, so we won't get clashes. Because obviously, back to my earlier point about synchronization of the models that you know in the controller and the models on the device, they'd better be the same model. So that's why we version them. But for example, you could have a totally different device. So we've worked with the guys um, who do OpenWRT, if any of you know that platform, which is a, a CPE operating system. Um, you can run it on sort of Linksys and Netgear type boxes. So with those guys, they've also Yang modeled what they have. And you could connect to one of those. And what you'd find, of course, would then be a completely different set of models that you'd load into your cache. So then when you want to push through into those nodes beneath you, as I said, you could, just as with the config thing, you do a post or a put to configure something. But equally, you do a get to get stuff out, whether it's config or operational state. But now that's how we configure routers that sit southbound of open daylight. And that, as I say, could be direct to XR, where you support NetConf Yang on the platform. But what we also see quite a lot is we did some work about a year ago um, integrating open daylight with the TLF NCS platform which is now, I believe, branded as NSO. Um, and what that lets us do is access devices that only have CLI. So the TLF product um, that we acquired can render CLI into NetConf Yang. So then we can configure XE devices, classic iOS devices, NXOS, et cetera. So that's pretty much it from me. Um, Milos, do you want to come and take over? So as I mentioned, what Milos is going to do is, is show the Yang UI tool. 
a you know, great way to explore Yang models and actually get, get into looking at them, which I guess is what you're here for today, given the title of the talk, rather than to listen to me. Does yours have one of these? Okay, so as Giles already mentioned, we in, in, in ODL we included application called Yang UI to help people or developers to get into this all in, into this Yang, Yang thing. And what it does is basically we are the oh, sorry we are the REST API is. It's getting the all the modules that are present in the ODL, and each of these module is basically some Yang file or Yang module that has its own containers, lists, imports, and 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 other stuff. And then there is another REST API that can basically get the in or XML representation of this Yang module uh, as. Uh, as some REST call. So for example, uh, here I've got the config module with, with some rev revision. And as you can see, uh, there is some name defined. And, and basically, the way how the Yang models are structured, they've got some like main, main statements or, or the resources statements, which are basically containers and lists. And in this, and, and what container is, is basically something that contains some other elements. Uh, what list this is something that contain, uh, contains multiple, multiple containers, basically. And then there is leaf statement, which is uh, something that uh, carries the data value. So, so for example, in the Yang UI, we have a list of the exposed modules. And as Giles mentioned, uh, the ODL can um, parse these modules and create the REST APIs based on the Yang modules. So for example, uh, this open daylight inventory module has operational and config storage. And in config, there is node API. No note is how this path uh, in the bottom change. Sorry? Is it better? Okay. And if I click on the like API derived from this API, is note. So uh, as was already mentioned, there is a thing that uh, is common occurrence in the in the ODL, like you got uh, container nodes and list nodes. So when I click on this uh, uh, module, in the bottom layer of the screen, I got the generated UI. So as I said, this is the container which currently contains only one element, which is list node, and in the list I can add new elements. So for example, uh, and all of the uh, sub-elements that the node contains are generated uh, under it. So let, let's say I will fill out this someone somehow, node, and then I can click on show preview and the basically the uh, payload the data payload and the and the api that will be used is is, is listed so so this way 
the mm, designer of the module can verify if the mod model, uh, if the Yang model is designed in the way he wants wants it. Because uh, the the good thing about ODL is that it can bring the engineering and the uh, developers people together. So and, and the common interface between them is basically the Yang module. So uh, the engineer tells the UI developer like this will be the module, this will be the specification, and then uh, the backend in the ODL in the Java uh, doesn't need to be even finished, but the, for example, the UI guy or whoever got, this, got the model specification and he can start coding UI or some other service which will be consuming the Java part. And uh, basically the only thing that uh, the uh, develop, developer who is doing service over the ODL needs to know is how the how the data uh, will be looking. So, for example, uh, uh, something like this. And uh, the like the added value of this UI is that the uh, mo the Yang modules are not so self-contained, so. Uh, you don't write only one file or one link module and that's it, but you can reference other modules in your module. So for example, there are IFTP modules with some basic types like MAC addresses, IPB addresses, and so on. And uh, in the leaf type, in the leaf statement, uh, which is, uh, which I said, as I said, is, uh, is some carrier of the value or, or, or of the data, uh, you need to specify what type this data will, will be. So, for example, you can uh, plug in the IFTP Yang uh, module and uh, specify in your leaf that this leaf will be type uh, MAC address, for example. And, and you got the uh, regex pattern and, and validators for the MAC address out of the box. So, uh, then what we did with this UI is use these types and, and, and patterns to, to provide some validation of the inputs. So when, when I hover over some input, it's a string which can be uh, whatever, but if I go a li li little bit lower, for example in the table, then in the flow, this buffer ID is some number. So if I try to type string, I will get some uh, error that this need to be confirmed to some uh, regular expression. And also if I, get large number, then I also get some validation. So, so th th this is another thing that the designer of the Yang mo mo uh, of the Yang module can, can validate that the uh, module is uh, is working the way he intended. And uh, as I was saying before, the uh, modules are not self-contained. So, for example, here in this uh, Yin representation of the modules. I've got something like grouping, which basically said, which is basically um, something that contains another Yang statement. And the way the grouping is used is with uses. Okay. So there are not no uses in, in this module, but. Uh, the, the way the uses uh, works is you got the another statement uses which basically uh, have the value of the grouping statement. So gr grouping has some name like service rep and in some container you, you can tell that this container will have uses service rep and everything that is under this grouping will be placed under the container. And the thing is that uh, these uses can also reference another module, and then the grouping from another module can have uses on its own, referencing another modules, and so on and so forth. So 
So like another thing in this Yang UI, uh, which I think very helpful for the developers is that the, uh, these models or these modules are fully uh, like uh, realized, like they are uh, every uses, every, every grouping is applied. So, so, so what you get here, you, you got everything what you are, like intended when, when you, are, you, you are writing the model put together. And also uh, similar to uses, there are type defs, which is basically a statement that enables you to create your own type. So uh, you, you, uh, the way you write type def, you, you state some basic type which you want to derive on. And then you've got another Yang statements like range, length, or regular expression, uh, by which you can uh, like uh, far further restrict the the original type. And uh, also the thing with these type defs and types, they can be also referenced from the from the uh, other modules. And then then the last uh, last. Uh, or, or, or the uh, another interesting thing how you can how you can uh, implement your own own modification uh, into Yang modules. For example, if you want to um, uh, add new plugin to the ODL to for network topology, you you cannot uh, you, you cannot change the uh, standard network topology. Uh, Yang model, but, but the way uh, you, you, you will do your own modification is that you will create your own module and then you've got the augmentation there, which should be also shown somewhere here. Are probably not, but uh, the way the uh, augmentation is working is uh, you specify the target node uh, that you want to augment. So, for example, if you want to augment network topology node, you need to uh, you need to specify the uh, mod, uh, the ba base basic module th that you are uh, augmenting, which is network topology, and then you you need to specify the node that you want to uh, augment. So, in case of network topology. Let's say you want to let's say you want to augment the network topology node to add some new features, for example, like status, I don't know, time that it has been connected or, or something like that. So actually you will need to enter this path. This is name of the module. Uh, then this is uh, name of the container, then this is name of the list, and then uh, another list called nodes. So, so and uh, the, uh, similar to, for example, uh, uses, you, you will then specify some Yang statements under the augmentation statement, and it will basically take all the statement, statements and put them in the in the target state target statement that, that you that you want to put, put them. So uh, yeah, mm, I I think uh, that's about it. Like the most like uh, the most usefulness of this tool is that the modu mod modules are fu fully realized. They are put together. So. You don't need to like uh, take track. Like I use this, this module, and then I I referenced other module, and I I, uh, I augmented another module. But you you got everything 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 put together. Okay. Yeah. So the next thing I guess Bimmel's going to come and talk about some of his experiences of. Um, coding stuff up with Yang in open daylight and how, how easy that is to do. It's probably worth saying, Yara, on your stuff that, that um, I mean, to me, a lot of it, 
way you'd want to start with Open Daylight in terms of exploring the Yang models is probably with the inventory, the topology, the config. Just kind of start by, by exploring those models, and then you kind of get a feel for how it all fits together. Hi, um, my name's Bimmel. Um, I'm actually interning at Cisco. Uh, started in July last year. Um, and I haven't heard of Yang models since... In university, they don't teach you about Yang models. You only learn about HTML, JavaScript, and everything else. Um, I was introduced uh, to Yang models by uh, Chris Metz, my manager, Giles himself, and Yure. Um, so my, uh, I went to a hackathon, IETF hackathon, and there I was asked to uh, build um, Yang to RFC template generator, and I had no idea what it was at all. Uh, and I looked it up, uh, and it was really easy to understand. So what I did, so how that Yang to RFC template generator worked is you import a Yang model, uh, you import, you select um, a Yang um, template, uh, which is in XML, I think. It's an XML template. Uh, and then you put, the, put it both, both of them together uh, uh, using a Python script. And after that, I just used uh, XML to RFC tool, which Python has, uh, and to actually uh, turn that into an RFC. And it was quite simple, and we won the hackathon. So it was uh, quite rewarding. Uh, so that's it. Quite it for me, really. Do you have anything to add, Giles? Of engineers um, or software developers or whatever, we I think we all have a problem with documentation, right? <laughs> um, so I know I'm much quicker at creating a Yang model than I am at creating a, an ITF draft. So. I think having someone who can write me some code that automates that process seems like a really good thing. Because um, we certainly, you know, I think I was saying yesterday in the, um, in the main PS, that's one of the challenges. In ITF, you know, we had, we've only so far managed to standardize about half a dozen Yang models. Um, there are many more now being written. Now everybody's getting excited by it. But in, in Open Daylight, we've, we've done like 500. And one of our benefits in Open Daylight is we don't have to write an ITF draft to document what we've done. But now I guess we can, we can probably produce 500 new ITF drafts to keep everyone busy from here till Christmas. Um, I guess what we want to say is that you know we're here all week, obviously, and we're um, we're all over on the SDN app stand in DevNet. Um, so do you know at any point come by, and if you have any questions of you know things we didn't explain clearly, or perhaps challenges that you have in your own work that um, you know you could where well, you can see that there could be some use in in deploying an SDN controller, but you can't. You know, if there's anything where you want to understand exactly how that would work or you know, what are the features that we might have or might not have, then, then yeah, just come on over. And um, it's always much more fun to have a whiteboard than it is to have PowerPoint. So, and, and equally, you or I can demo stuff one-to-one you know, one with the Yang UI tools. So, yeah, just thanks for your time.